Let's now look at archiving files with Enterprise Vault. And we'll start once again with the architecture of uh, file system archiving. The file system archiving task runs a folder walker thread and walks through each of the folders that are defined as targets for archiving and will find files that it needs to archive. In this case, it's found a Microsoft Word file. That file is then stored by the storage service in our Vault Store partition and metadata is stored in the Vault Store and Fingerprint database. The difference with this is that with a Windows file server, we have a placeholder service that's running on the Windows file server. And once the file archiving process is complete and the item is backed up in Enterprise Vault, the placeholder service will then replace the file with a placeholder shortcut. In file system archiving, we have two main types of policies. We have volume policies and folder policies, and these define things like the type of shortcut to create, the archiving rules, uh, archiving to achieve quotas, the retention category, and for volume policies, we can also do file blocking rules. Within both volume and folder policies, there are archiving rules, and the rules define the file selection criteria, so what types of files we're going to select, for instance, office files or text files, the action to be performed, and the main one is archive, but there's also do not archive, delete, and whether and when to create shortcuts. In terms of targets, there are three types of targets that we define. First of all, there are file server targets. These are obviously the file servers that contain files to be archived. The three types of file servers that are fully supported are Windows, NetApp, and EMC VNX. Windows file servers need agent software installed on them. That gives us the placeholder service that we talked about previously. Then we have volume targets. These are the shares that contain files to be archived. It can be a root folder, um, but a subfolder is recommended. And then we need to find folders, folders that contain files to be archived. We must assign at least one folder target. And to archive from the root, use just backslash. You also assign archive points when creating folder targets. And I'll explain what archive points are in a minute. If you think about a file structure, we've got one here on this slide. Where are the archives? What are we actually going to archive? It's not clear. With a mailbox, we know that we're going to create one archive for each mailbox. But in this case, where is going to be the archive? And that's where we need archive points. Archive points define where the archives are. They're just little markers in the file system that you can't really see. So if we define an archive point for the projects folder, what that means is that all those subfolders underneath a projects folder will be in one archive called projects. Another example might be we decide that we want to create archive points for the houses subfolder and for the factory subfolder. What this will mean is we'll end up with two archives, one for houses and its subfolders and one for factory and its subfolders. And we can define these archive points when we create the folder targets. So there are two types of shortcuts. I've already mentioned placeholders. Placeholders emulate the file type and size. They can be opened seamlessly in the application. Then they're denoted with the offline file marker, which you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the icon. And they're only supported on Windows, NetApp, and EMC or VNX. The other alternatives, internet shortcuts. These are just files with a .url extension. There's no emulation of file type or size. Users need to save the file before it can be opened, but the good thing is they are supported on all file server platforms. So how do placeholder shortcuts work? Well, every Windows file server that we're archiving from will have a placeholder service on it. Our client double clicks the placeholder. What will happen is that placeholder service make a call to the storage service, will retrieve the item from storage and bring it back to the file server. And then the placeholder service will temporarily replace the placeholder with the full file. This is different from mailbox archiving. The default and file server archiving is that we do replace the shortcuts temporarily with the full file. The file is then opened seamlessly within Word. 
When the file is closed, later on the file system archiving task will just convert that file back into a placeholder shortcut. So I'm now going to do a demonstration of file system archiving. So we're going to start the demonstration on the file server and there are a couple of things I want to show you here. The first thing is I want to show you the three services that are on a file server when we install the file server agents. If I go to the services console and you'll see that I've got three services here which are the Enterprise Vault file blocking service, the file collector service and the one that I'm most interested in, the Enterprise Vault placeholder service. It's the presence of that service on the file server that enables us to open placeholders and also to be able to create placeholders on file servers. The other thing I wanted to show you was that I do already have some files archived. So they're under D and then this folder is share EV. Uh, and in fact, there's one file that's archived already. So if you see this file here, test, you'll notice that the icon's got a little cross on it. This is indicating that it's archived. It's an offline file marker that we use to indicate that the file is archived. So what I'm going to do now is to go to my Enterprise Vault server and show you the Enterprise Vault administration console. So here's the uh, admin console. And the first thing I want to show you is the targets that I've already got created. So under targets, I go under file servers, and you'll notice I've got a server here added. And under that server, I've already got my share, EV added. And in fact, I've just created a folder target of the root folder. And you'll notice I'm applying a policy, the volume policy research policy. So I'm going to go and have a look at that policy now to show you what it's actually doing. So that's under policies and then under file uh, and go into volume. So if we go to the research volume policy, this is set to create placeholder shortcuts. But the most important thing is that it's got archiving rules. So we've got one rule ready to archive text files and I'm going to create a new rule in here To archive PDF documents. I'm going to specify that I want to archive those files uh, and I can use a group but actually I'm just going to specify the extension like that. In rules I can also specify the time so I can say only files that have been modified or accessed in the last six months or whatever. I can do it based on attributes as well and I can control when the shortcut is going to be created. We're going to want to create the shortcut immediately. So I've now applied that rule um, to my policy. So what I want to do now is to run the archiving task. So you can notice I've got the file system archiving task and click run now. I'm going to run it in normal mode. You'll notice there's a report mode as well, um, which doesn't actually archiving, it just gives you a report of what it would archive, but I'm just going to choose normal mode. We do need to wait um, a couple of minutes for the archiving to complete. You'll notice that the archiving task has gone into a processing state, which means that it's now going through each of the files within that share, finding out whether it is now a candidate for archiving and all the PDF documents in there should now be candidates and archiving them. So the file system archiving task has gone back into a running state, which means that it's finished processing. So I'm now going to go over to my client machine over here. And the first thing you'll notice is that now all the PDF documents have got little X's against them, which they didn't have before, which means that they've been archived. If I actually look at the properties of one of these documents, you'll notice that it now says the size of the document, it says is 1.26 megabytes, but the size on disk, it says is four kilobytes, which is actually the block size. So the file is now actually very small, although the placeholder is clever in that it emulates both the file type and the file size. So if I double click this file, 
it's now going to open up within Adobe Acrobat. So you'll notice that the file opens successfully and when I close this down you'll notice that the icon has gone back to a normal icon. There's no little X on it anymore. The reason is because the way that the placeholder service works is that when you double click and open a file it actually retrieves the whole file back to the file server temporarily. The next time I run the archiving task this will actually just go back to being a placeholder shortcut again. So that brings us to the end of our short demonstration of how file system archiving works.